What's going on with you guys? You know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike. Uh, and today I got something really, really dope to show you. And it is the M uh, I dot one or the me one, however you want to say it. Um, basically wireless Bluetooth adapter. This thing plugs up into any standard MIDI port uh, on any keyboard. I've been using it with my uh, controllers you know, with my uh, MIDI controllers, uh, because I don't have any hardware keyboards. Uh, I just use MIDI controllers and software instruments exclusively when I gig and when I produce in the studio and all of that. Uh, so I've been using this with my MIDI controllers and it works wonderful. I mean, there is very low latency, uh, if uh, if any noticeable latency and that was my big thing when i was thinking about bluetooth is there going to be latency with it because i've de dealt with bluetooth audio and there's always like a slight a slight latency in the in the sync of audio uh with, when it comes to bluetooth and you know in a church environment or in a live gig environment a split second or a split hair of latency will throw everything off but not with these not with these this is like just dang near zero latency. I really can't feel um, many much latency. Maybe if I had another like a hardware keyboard and I had the, the actual physical sound layered under it, I could probably hear the latency. But this, when you're playing, it, it feels comfortable. You can't really feel the latency in it. Uh, and that's what I think is amazing. Now, this thing costs 45 bucks on Amazon. And I think it's worth every penny because you can take uh, this will plug into any keyboard that has standard MIDI ports and it's powered. That's the dope part is powered by uh, the US, not the USB, but by the MIDI port. The MIDI port itself has uh, gives out power. And I did not know that until I was actually, you know, buying this device. So you don't have to charge it. Uh, you don't have to plug it up to a socket or anything like that. The MIDI port itself generates enough energy, enough uh, power electricity to actually power this device uh, and allow you to connect to it wirelessly. I think that's dope. Don't have to worry about charging it. It just plugs straight in and then inside of settings in my MIDI settings on my device, whether it's my iPad or my MacBook, uh, I can just wirelessly connect to it. So it's really, really dope. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys uh, how you connect it uh, to your to your keyboard and how you can um, connect to it from whatever device. I'm going to show you both uh, a Mac and my iPad down here, how you can do this or what have you. So let's jump into it. So what you want to do is, is take uh, it and plug it into the back of your uh, keyboard uh, in the standard MIDI ports. Uh, and then once you get it plugged in, you'll see that there's a little indicator light that starts blinking as soon as you get it in there uh, really good and then that lets you know that you got power to it and then you can just jump over to your computer or your um, uh, iPad and connect straight to it. All right so we're here on my MacBook Pro. This is really really easy to set up on your Mac uh, if you have a Mac. Uh, very very easy to set up. It only takes literally a few clicks so what you're going to do is open up audio MIDI settings uh, let me close this for a second, but audio MIDI settings. Uh, and if you don't know how to get it, just hit your space bar and type in audio MIDI setup and it'll pop up and you can open it up and you'll get this little me uh, menu. And then you're going to click on where it says Bluetooth here. Uh, and then once that opens, uh, once you've connected the MI, MI1, uh, you'll see connect right here under Bluetooth. And it's just literally hitting connect and boom. Now it's connected. I got logic open up here with Keyscape opened up on a channel and boom. I mean, no latency. I can record and play just like that uh, and do that in any software. There's really no other connections I need to make. Now, with that said, we'll close that uh, and we'll disconnected if you're let's say you're using something like like I do this all the time I use Omnisphere standalone by itself uh, in live performance uh, so now of course I've got that MI1 plugged up but it's not doing anything in this in a software like this there's several other softwares that I use that are like this you have to go in and actually go into settings uh, and then you'll see under active MIDI inputs the MI1 Bluetooth 
and you'll select it. And now that is connected uh, just in there. So there's it's just literally seamless connection. And it's the exact same way if you're using it uh, on your iPad. So let's jump over there and I'm going to show you how that works. All right. So now I'm here on the iPad uh, and I'm just going to open up my Ravenscroft uh, piano or what have you, uh, because connecting it inside of on, on your iPad uh, is not similar to the way it is on the Mac, you know, on the Mac, you can go into settings. Like if I go into my settings here, let's just jump into settings and I go into Bluetooth, uh, it doesn't show up under Bluetooth devices to connect to it that way. Uh, but you have to do it in this case, you have to do it um, using uh, your individual app settings. So in this case, I'll open up an app like Ravenscroft uh, and go into audio MIDI preferences. Uh, and then there's a little tab that says Bluetooth MIDI. I'll tap that and just hit connect the same way I would uh, on my Mac. Now, uh, now you see that it's checked here. You know, you would check it if it was unchecked. Uh, and now, just like that. I got it connected right there just perfectly. I think this is absolutely amazing and a game changer. So uh, I can also open up an app like, uh, let's just go with the Korg module. Uh, we'll just open up module and I think it's going to automatically connect if I remember correctly. Let's just see. Uh, yep. Automatically connected. I didn't have to do anything to connect it inside of the Korg module. <laughs> It just automatically connects. So that is just the, the very easy and simple way that you can connect this device um, and use it to play uh, uh, live or use it for recording inside of the studio. There are so many applications. Uh, I'm personally looking forward to just using this live in my live setup uh, at church when I play or when I go out and gig. It's just amazing that I can take this uh, out where I need to take it uh, and, and make it happen. So that's it. That's pretty much how this device works and how you can use it uh, using your Mac, your uh, computer. Uh, I don't have a PC to test this on, so I can't tell you how it would work if you have a PC or, or an Android device. Uh, so I can't really give that knowledge to you, but I can show you how it works on Mac. But my question to you guys, I'm going to toss a question to you. Uh, have you ever tried Bluetooth uh, MIDI or ever thought about using Bluetooth MIDI uh, for your uh, studio or for live performances. If you have, tell me what, what devices you've tried, what you've used. There, this isn't the only one that's on the market. There are several devices that do this on the market. So let me know in the comments what device that you've tried or used if you have, or if you haven't used it or thought about using it, is this, does this video make it, make it interesting to you? Uh, to get it. Now, there are a link to, to check this down in the description. If you want to uh, purchase this, I threw a little uh, link down there uh, to it on Amazon where I bought it from. So just go on down there in the description of this video uh, and you can purchase it uh, there or what have you. All right, folks, that's all I got for today. We'll talk to you guys on the next video. I'm out. Holla at your boy.